but you can call me GK. And welcome to another intimate and interactive in partnership with TikTok. Today, we're chatting with an artist who's no stranger to the music scene. You may know him as a former band member from the legendary boy band One Direction, who has since embarked on a very successful solo career. And he's captured the hearts of many fans across the world. So please join us in welcoming the talented man behind the music, Niall Horan! <laughs> Gosh, welcome. I can't believe we're finally sitting Hello. down chatting. How are you? Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. No, oh, let's see what you did. <laughs> how are you? I'm good, thank you. How's things? Good, good. Honestly, I've been thinking, how many people would be fangirling right now to just like be in your presence to sit with you, <laughs> to chat with you? Some might say it's heaven. Laugh, that's a pun. That's a pun. <laughs> oh, no. No, I know, I know. I know they're awful, but it gets me going. Every time. <laughs> so Heaven's one of the songs that you'll actually be performing for us later on. And I feel like the space is pretty reflective of the vibe and how it yeah. makes me feel. It looks what do you great. think? Yeah. Pretty accurate. Yeah. Since Heaven is the first track off of the new album, why don't you tell us a little bit about the meaning behind the song? It kind of comes from a spot of kind of not conforming to the social pressures of that people try and put on us. Like that, yeah. <laughs> I think we always like watch everybody else's life and then think that's how you should do it. And then forget to do our do our own thing at our own pace and our sure. own time. For and sure. That's where it kind of comes from. So I was just kind of like, I'm in a good spot. Yeah. I want to write about that and I don't want to like, I think we're always like trying to future proof stuff as well. I know, I it's know. so true. So, so just kind of do it at your own pace and see how it goes. Good advice, guys. Write that out. <laughs> do it at your own pace. But honestly, let's dive into the rest of your music because I feel like we have a lot to chat about. You have a new album. Mm -hmm. It's called The Show, released June 9th. Yep. This is your third studio album. It is. It is. So, you know the saying, third time's a charm? Yep. I guess in context of success, do I hope you so. feel? I hope so. <laughs> do you feel that way about this album? Like, did it achieve everything that you wanted it to, from your perspective? Uh, yeah. Well, musically, I think it's where I would like to be. Um, it's got a good combination of things that I'm in. Like, I listen to and my interests and my, my references and all that are all kind of in there. It's mm. conceptually exactly what I want to say, where I am. You're comfortable. Like, you've done the first ones out of the way, yeah. then the second ones, like you know, uh, yeah. more comfortable. Now, third one, I feel like. Yeah. Coming out with a bang. The album sounds amazing. Thank you very much. I love it. Let's hope millions around the world agree. They definitely will. <laughs> but talk to me about the title. So the show, mm. you've mentioned before, is like a metaphor for life in mm. general. So what sparked that idea to kind of have an album that's all-encompassing of just life? I think I'm probably sitting still during the pandemic. Yeah. Like I, I keep saying, it's like it's like we're in some sort of alternate reality. Like a Trum simulation? Yeah, Trum Truman Show <laughs> craziness. Do you think we're in a simulation? Ooh. <laughs> during the pandemic, so there was a lot more like, like kind of bigger thinking going on than there usually would be. Absolutely. Like when you're when we're all like going around getting life experience out and about doing our regular stuff, you're not thinking. No. <laughs> you're just kind of going. You're just going through the motions. So it was good to sit still for a second and that's where all these kind of the things like the show and and the overall concept of the album kind of came from that, which is great. I mean, if you're describing your life as a show as the show, mm. What era of your life would you say that you're in right now? If, like, you could title this current episode of the show. Formative round three is the name of this episode. <laughs> okay, what does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. Everyone talks about, like, 16 to 20, yeah. 20 to 24, you know, leave college, get your first job, all that kind of stuff. But more happens between 25 and, or 24 and 30, say, than, than, you, than I th ever thought. Which um, milestone birthday coming up? Yeah, the big three zero wow. coming up. I'm about to change. Yeah. <laughs> what? The day, the night before versus the day after? Oh, God. I'm going to be hungover. How does that yeah. feel? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so nothing really changed. Uh, no, it's nothing's changed at all. <laughs> Would you say, I know you're heavily involved also on the music production side of mm. things. How many instruments are you playing on this album? I, play, I played a few on this. Not very well, mind you, but I played them. Yeah. I played guitar, I played the piano, I played harmonica, I played mm. a bit of drums, a bit of bass. Very badly and incrementally. Yeah. I'm not like playing all of it. All. No, no, not at the same time you're running back to the channel <laughs> then running back. I'm curious uh, to see who here plays an instrument or can play an instrument. Raise your hand. Like, Two, three, The four, fact five. that you played more instruments on this album <laughs> than everyone oh, yeah. in this room combined, actually quite raise your hand. I know you play the clarinet. No, I love it, but that's amazing. Is it challenging or do you want to really be uh, kind of? I think it's a lot of the time why I play a lot of the instruments is because I'm the one with the melody in my head. Yeah. So I like I feel like if I can play to what's going on in my yes, head, then I could probably it. get it across better than someone sat next to me can. For sure. You know what I mean? If it's like a bass line or whatever, I'm hearing that bass line, so I could 
work it out myself and then try and play You're it. You're producing your own music. That's not to say that I played it well or anything, but I definitely can no, hear it. No, <laughs> you definitely do. This guy's humble. <laughs> I'm really humble. <laughs> no, I love it. And I love that a lot of the songs on your album are very like upbeat and kind of have mm. almost an 80s vibe to it, I mm. find. You know, encapsulates that uplifting energy. What would you say is a song that uplifts you during tough times? Probably Meltdown would be the one, actually, now yeah. that I think of it. Um, I can see that being a go-to for a lot of people. Yeah, I think so. When you're when you're feeling shit, listen to my new single meltdown. <laughs> you can have a dance. Yeah, a TikTok I, dance. Well, yeah. You're having a meltdown. You're just like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Good idea. <laughs> Write that down, label. I won't credit you, but um, at least uh, we have it. We have it yeah, recorded right yeah, now. Yeah, it's, it's all on camera. They've seen yeah. it. Enough people have seen it. On an, a little bit of an unserious note, when was the last time? Do you remember? that you had almost like a mini meltdown. For me, I know it's when I go to the nail salon and then I go home with a fresh yeah. set and then it chips right oh, away and oh. I'm like, mini meltdown right there. <laughs> oh, Christ. Yeah. Just wasted all your time just sat exactly. there. Exactly. Right? So what's like something uh, like that for you? Uh, that just gets you under your skin. Oh God, I don't know. I have many meltdowns every I, day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I see my schedule for the next month. Damn. Uh, I nearly cried. Yeah. Oh, uh, I can't even imagine. Yeah, your schedule is yeah. probably like uh, a blur. Yep. <laughs> blur. Well, speaking of meltdowns, mini meltdowns, uh, your fans had kind of a mini meltdown when they saw you kind of exposed something about yourself on TikTok. Let's take it to a streeter fan question and they're going to give you some more context. What's up, Much Music? It's Berta out in these streets. I have Samantha here and she has a fan question for Niall. What was with that chicken? I don't know the context, but boy, put some like basil or something on it. I don't know. What chicken? Which one are you talking I about? I saw a TikTok and he made a joke about himself and there was a chicken, but it had nothing on it. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> What's up with the chicken now? We just <laughs> want to know. Thank you so much. Uh, here's the context. Yeah, it context. was all a joke and no one got no. it. No. <laughs> it was? Damn, that ruined the whole like, bit. I, I, I have this issue a lot. Make yeah. a lot of like... Jokes, jokes that don't people land. People take it seriously. Yeah. Especially on this side of the planet. Yeah. yeah the old, on the this old, side. The old sarcasm doesn't go down very well. So yeah, there was a chicken and it was purposefully unseasoned. Unseasoned. And, then, and, and everyone just started rinsing me because they thought I was being serious. Yeah. It's like a trend that was like um, things I ate and yeah, survived. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then it was like a picture of an unseasoned, uncooked chicken. Everyone was like, oh my God, like I just go along season with your chicken. Yeah. yeah. But people thought that, that was real. Okay, so what's up with the chicken? The chicken bit yeah. was fake. Yeah. Sorry to break that for you guys. Yeah, <laughs> moving on. Let's take it back a little bit. I love the, by the way, I love the way she hadn't got a clue who I was. <laughs> she was just told by that girl. I'm going to tell you what to say, and now, just because I've got a camera here and I've gone up to you and I've asked you, are you a fan of Niall Horan? And you've gone, I don't know who he is. <laughs> just say this, okay? Yeah, and now she's made a bit. No, I love it. It was genuine. It was genuine. <laughs> but yeah, let's take it back a little bit. You started your career pretty young. You auditioned for X Factor at the ripe age of 16. Mm -hmm. So what was it like being in the public eye at such a young age? Crazy. Yeah. But I was too young to overthink it and care. Yeah. So I was just going along with it. Yeah, was it like um, pressuring? At the start it was, there was a bit of like, actually I don't know, I, I was just kind of going along with that. I never, yeah. really, I never really overthought it. The only thing that was different was I wasn't living at home anymore. I was yeah. just like, okay, fair. packed a suitcase, left and never came back. Yeah. For a teenager I feel like that's so, sort of the dream though. Like, now I want to go home. Like, and now, <laughs> you, now you want to go home. It is funny how that works. You yeah. grow up in a small town, you're like, get me out here. Now I just want to go home all the time. That's what happens when you're 30. That's what happens. That's, that's what, what changes. Happens. That's what happens. I don't know, I just kind of, I've always been like a, Bit of a cruiser, just yeah. kind of go along well, with it. Well, that's how you should go along with life. Like, mm. just live in the moment, don't think about it too much. Yeah, and see what happens. But yeah, it was exactly. a bit of a shock to the system. I think for sure. What happened with us? It was just like that. So yeah. I didn't really get time to think. It was just. Yep. Yeah. Until you're up there, then you get a chance to think about it. Now I'm thinking. Yeah, now you're thinking. <laughs> but fast forward, being a solo artist, making a name and career for yourself. What was that transition period like for you? I found it okay, actually. I mm -hmm. just kind of went, just again. Guys, you know this guy mean? just rides the waves. Yeah, I just buckle up and go with it. Um, I don't know. I just trusted that I could write a song. Yep. And I think having that trust in yourself is half the battle. I just had to just pick up the guitar and see what happened. Uh, but knowing that I've done it previously and I could maybe do it again. Yeah. It just had to be good. Mm -hmm. That was the issue. And I just, I trusted in that. Like, as I, I could have easily freaked out and gone, uh, Yeah, totally. Uh, what do I do now? I went traveling for three or four months in Asia. Like, the, once, the, the, yeah. once the pause happened, it was just like, oh, I should tee up just something some to do. Yeah, and just go away instead of, like, sitting in my house. But, uh, yeah, and then I was just like, right, sat down and started playing. The first song that I wrote was This Town, which is a good wow. place to start. And once, once I'd gotten that, I was like, I kind of relaxed me a little bit. Yeah. And then I just had to trust in 
the fact that I've performed, like, I perform a lot. You literally already um, had it. I trust that I can write a tune uh, every now and then. So I just had to trust those instead of, like, thinking the mm -hmm. about the negative. Mm -hmm. And then just... <laughs> Do, do a lot of that. <laughs> no, but obviously, like you still had a platform, but was there any doubt in your mind going into it yeah. about continuing music once that happened? Oh no, no, no! no. So I was going to continue music. Good. It was just how well it was going to go. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, thankfully, it's gone very well, and I'm very happy. Um, thanks to everyone. And we're happy. We're happy that you continue because look at where you are now. <laughs> well, you like to call yourself a normal guy with an abnormal job, but what would you be doing today if it weren't music? God, when I left school, I was at that age where. All I was doing was just going to school, getting yeah. getting through it. Yeah. I had no idea of like what I was going to do next. Didn't really care either. And you know, you're at that age where it's just like I haven't even thought about. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. But I just, no I have always knew that I wanted to be in music in some shape or form, whatever that yeah. may be. No plan B. No plan B. No music plan B. Um, it's called manifestation. Of course. Uh, <laughs> Talk to us about it. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I just that's all I knew, and I was just I don't I actually honestly don't have a clue. Yeah. yeah. Are you still friends with the One Direction boys? Of course. Yeah, we uh, we have we now have another uh, WhatsApp group. You guys don't use wow. WhatsApp, do you? Yeah, I do. Do you? Yeah. Oh, so it's in. It's Can a I thing be added in to in this WhatsApp group? <laughs> no. <laughs> He's like, no. Straight up, couldn't even play the joke. No. Not a chance. No, I get <laughs> just it. Keep I rubbing get it. it in. Yeah. No way. For this album night that you've been working on. You also asked Louis for mm. some advice and his honest opinion. What did he say? He said it was really good. Nice. He said it was melodic. Any advice? No. Did he get, no, it no. was just perfect. No advice, just compliments. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why I went to, I know. <laughs> yeah. I just want everyone to stuff. make me feel good. Yeah. <laughs> I liked it, so. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks very much. You're welcome. I'll send you the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Also, you were on the most recent season of The Voice. Yeah. For those who don't know. What was it like being on the other side of a show like that? Obviously, you were a judge and you've been on, on the flip side where you were a singer, a contestant. So mm -hmm. what was that like? I didn't really know what to expect. Like, I'd, I'd never done, like, apart from being on TV, mm -hmm. I'd never, like, done any, like, television stuff. So it was a bit of a shock to the system when I got asked if I wanted to do it or not. But the show itself is brilliant. It's such yeah. a, like, a, it's such a fun vibe. They've done, like, 23 seasons of it, so they've got it down to a science and... Yeah. It's just really well run and yeah, there's definitely a level of like empathy towards the art, all the other artists. Yeah. Like for instance, there's a there's a guy on my team, and he's 15. Wow. Um, his maturity levels are, he's 55, but um, <laughs> he is like still that young, fresh face, and it reminds me of like me. Yourself. Yeah, well, I can't, couldn't sing like him, but like it reminds me of of uh, of me when I was stood there, and I can I have that like I can see them on the stage, and they're in the lights, and they're singing their best and then they're listening to us speak. I remember when I, <clears throat> when I was on stage back then, you'd stand there and the, the, the coaches would do all the talking and you wouldn't be listening to a word of it. Right. You're just like so like gobsmacked. Yeah. And so I've got this like empathy with them where I can speak to them totally. on a level and, and make good choices and give them good advice on how to like navigate a show of that's course. of that stature. But it's been great fun. I've, yeah. really, I've really enjoyed it. There's no doubt that all the contestants obviously feel some sort of comfort when they come on stage knowing that one of the mm. judges has been through that exact scenario. So I think that that's why they probably feel some level of connection or like comfort with you. Yeah, if I was coming up there, I'd be like, okay, that, that's what I'm looking for here. Cause yeah. trying to get through the show is hard enough, totally. you know, before you go and make it. But um, just trying to get them all to enjoy it is the biggest thing. Because yeah. on The Voice, you've got all these like ridiculously technical gifted singers and there's a level of seriousness to it. So I'm always trying to get them to chill their Stop. beans and yeah. just <laughs> take it all in, you know, because I remember like back then, we, we had the best laugh of all time and still did okay out of it. So of just, course. But you give them good advice that way. What, what would you say is, some advice or the best advice you've received from another artist could be on the show, could be just mm. anyone in general. I just think, I think like being yourself is a big one. I think people can see right through it. You know, if you're a public face and one person, and then you know, in private, you're completely different. Like, totally. I think people can see if you're an authentic. Yeah. Because I think it's very easy to get get on a cam get on camera or get on stage and just be put on this character. I people mean, are drawn. They see through that though. They, yeah, they're I think drawn so. to the genuineness. If that's even a word, genuineness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. Well, enough of me for a quick sec. We're gonna hit it back to the streets. We got another streeter back question. Back to the streets. Yeah, back <laughs> the to the streets. The mean street. streets of Queen Street. Yeah, you got it. It's Verda out here on the streets. I was just wondering if you had a question for Niall. He's gonna see this, so 
So I'm from Ireland, I moved here. Um, I want to know what the one thing he misses the most about Ireland whenever he's not there. Oh, that's a great question. So how that's awesome a great question. is that? <laughs> uh, we literally found someone on the streets who was oh, there. Pregnant. you are. It was a great question. Yeah. <laughs> oh, See, told you. Uh, what do I miss most? The fact uh, that we found someone from the streets that was from Ireland, like that, yeah. I don't know. Rentacrowd.com. No, no, that was genuine. Um, I can stand by that. It's not, let's be honest. Come on, come this is on. all a show. You don't believe it? It's all a lie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Curtains come down. Yeah, yeah. What do you oh, miss most? God. We live up to every stereotype that you could think that we have, apart from the leprechaun thing. Mm. Although, they could be real. <laughs> the Guinness in Ireland is just a different league. My granny's cooking. Nice. Um, of course. The simplicity mm -hmm. of life. life. Yeah, wow. yeah. See that? Sink. That's crazy. Of life. <laughs> of life. You know, I think, yeah, the simplicity of it is, yeah. See like, that. I live in London and spend a lot of time in LA and I'm in Toronto and I'm yeah. like, you know, it's like, Wah. so I like the, the simplicity of it all. When totally. you go back there, it's like, ah. Oh. No, I get it, yeah. for You sure. know what I mean? Yeah. Well, obviously you're a typical Irish dude, as I feel like you would describe yourself, but what's the most Irish stereotype you think you follow? And the Guinness thing is pretty yeah. high up there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, we definitely drink Guinness. I swear a lot. Okay, nice. Do you, I don't know if you've got any idea how hard it is to um, not swear. Oh, okay, yeah. right now? Or curse, whatever you this say. Guy's here, like, uh. Without even realizing every third or fourth word is <laughs> Let her, I swear. let her go. Yeah, yeah, that's f so yeah, no, that's we do that a lot. <laughs> um, I don't really tan. Yeah, okay, there you go. That's pretty Need good. Sunscreen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What are your thoughts on Canada? Ah, oh, stop! I love this place. Really? Yeah. You know, uh, Newfoundland has a pretty big Irish oh population. Oh my god! You fit right in. I know a couple of people from. Well, I met a couple of people from Newfoundland, and I honestly thought I was talking to an Irish person. <laughs> the accent is. On, oh, on it's point? incredible. People-wise, we're we're not too dissimilar. I feel like the Aussies. The Canadians, mm -hmm. the Irish, are all quite similar. Just the humor is different. Yeah, okay. It's crazy how it changes. The culture is different. Yeah, yeah. Like, all you have to do is drive a couple of hours south of here, and it's a completely <laughs> different like, humor. I, it's true. It's, it is nuts. But yeah, I've always felt like when I come here, I don't feel like I'm on like some international promo trip. I always feel like I'm, like it feels comfortable here. I like that. And the gigs are just <laughs> off the charts here. The crowd <laughs> nice. are crazy. So you so, like yeah. Canada. Do yeah. you have a favorite Canadian artist? It's hard to look past Buble for me. Like, <laughs> I seen him recently in concert. Went backstage, had a chat with him. Yeah. He's just the nicest fella that ever was. He's always given me good advice, actually. Nice. Someone we can't really talk about. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, Censor. But, yeah. but uh, he's, he's always been like a big moral support, Boulay, okay. for me. I've got loads of, all the Canadian, uh, all the Canadians, Shania. Oh. Oh, don't get me started. He's a queen, man. Mendez, Bieber, all them all. Nickelback. <laughs> uh, why are you laughing at? <laughs> I never understood the Nickelback thing. Everyone hates on them. Yeah. You heard you know something? This no, is true. You Look at this graph. Yeah, you new photograph. photograph. That was pretty good. Some absolute right? bangers, by the way. They're good. Yeah. Let's do it again. Look at this. This is photograph. <laughs> yeah, they get, they get a hard time, and I don't understand. Yeah, honestly, I couldn't tell you. What they are, they're, they're like... Here, come on. You tell the camera now why you hate Nickelback. <laughs> Nickelback's amazing. We all agree, OK? So since we're talking some parallels between Ireland and Canada, mm -hmm. Have I teed this up to the perfect yeah, segue? Yeah, I think you have. Without even knowing. Just without even knowing. We're going to talk some more parallels between slang. OK. So you guys in Ireland obviously have a lot of slang. I went through them and I was like, I don't understand a goddamn word this is. Like, this doesn't look like a word to me. Okay. But in Toronto, we also have Toronto slang. <laughs> We're gonna go through some Irish slang and see if you can guess the equivalent, guess of, the the equivalent? Toron of our Toronto slang. Okay. We're getting a little <laughs> presentation right here. Oh. Okay, this side is yours. Yep. This one's mine, no, I'm kidding. Um, so what's there's quite, this? There's quite a few, like, English Isms. Oh like, yeah? Yeah, like yeah. London things okay. that I'm seeing a lot. So then it might help you out. So well, let's start with the first one. Right. How do you say this? I know how you say it, but... What's the crack? Yeah. Uh, I assume it's this? Well, we can, I'll tell you at the end, but we can swap it right, out. Let's do it now. Let's, let me do That's it and what then see what saying? happens. Sham. What is sham mean? How do you even describe sham? <laughs> it's just a bit like, uh, yeah, you're just a good sham. Yeah. You're good. Like a pal. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't even know how to describe that. Okay, well, I, I get I, the context. To be honest, though, I don't really it. use it. Okay, well. I wouldn't use it now, to be honest. Well, okay. sham, okay, if we, if we say context of a pal, what do you think it is? Sham. Sorry, let me do, I'm doing a bit of maneuvering here. I feel like I'm on some weird TV show. <laughs> uh, okay. Crib. 
Yeah. Crib is gaff. Oh, you got it. Okay, what's gaff? Gaff is house. There you go. You go to a gaff party. Yeah, okay. House, house party. party. Yeah. Nice gaff. Nice gaff. Nice wow. crib. Nice gaff. Like what you did with the place. Like the context. Yeah, the yeah. sentences help. Uh, hape. Hape, yep. Uh, what does hape mean? Hape means loads. Like loads of something, like a lot of. Yeah. So what do you think is the... What have you got there? No. We haven't done sham yet. What do you think sham is? <laughs> this one? Yep. Like fam, like fam, like... What's up fam? What's up fam, yep, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm getting there. Okay. okay. How Wayne, about Wayne? Wayne is like young person. Okay. So what do you think? I didn't know it was spelled like that, by the way. There were a couple spellings, and I was like, I'm I not thought Irish. it was like W E E E apostrophe U N. Okay, yeah, I didn't or see like that. that. One. I didn't see that one, but you, you think that's it? Okay. Don't look at me like There's, that. There's no, no, no. Don't me, look at me give like that. Give me this. He said, "Don't look at me like that." Murked. <laughs> What's Banjax though? Banjax is broken. So you think murked is broken? I'm not questioning. Like this, you could Mur be right. Murked means like, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> In, in, yeah? Yeah. Get murked. Yeah. yeah, okay. Get murked, fam. <laughs> that was, okay, sorry. Round of applause, man. Yeah? Okay, what is, yeah, okay. what's bullin? Bullin is like take, angry, take, bull take. What do you think the equivalent to angry is in Toronto slang? Waste, man. <laughs> uh, cheesed. Okay. I'm cheesed off. I'm not gonna lie, you're doing incredible right now. Okay, waste, man. Egypt. What's Egypt? <laughs> uh, Egypt's just idiot. Kind of sounds like idiot though. Yeah, yeah. E Egypt. Egypt. And there's two ways of saying it actually, depending on where you're from. It could be Egypt, and it would be a G, mm -hmm. or Egypt. There's two, I don't know why it changes well, so much. Well, we use the J, so well, that's I don't even, what it is. I actually don't even know which one I say. Egypt. Wait, they sound? Egypt. I would oh, say Egypt. Egypt. Okay. He's an Egypt. He's an Egypt. He's okay. a waste man. By default, this one goes together, and you know what's crazy? You literally got this all right. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> this guy is a certified Toronto man. What are you man? saying, fam? What are you saying, fam? You're okay. getting murked. He's having way too much fun I'm with this. cheese with you, waste yeah. man. <laughs> He's calling me a waste man, though. Yeah, yeah. No, okay, give this guy's Canadian citizenship. I'm done. I'm gonna about to walk up the stage. This is awesome. Murked, nailed it. Broken, nailed it. Honestly, round of applause for this. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Oh, Canada, our home and native land. Oh! No. That's as far as I get. Okay, well, we're gonna move on to some online fan questions. And when I put it out there that we we're accepting some fan questions online, I got literally the biggest wave, hundreds of responses. I had a mini meltdown when I saw that. That's in good. a good way, in a good, good way. Good. But it was crazy. So we're gonna go through those right now. Uh, we have three, and the first one comes from at Lucky Nui on Twitter. He has sold some interesting <coughs> merch items before, but would he be willing to sell cardigans? Niall has Ooh. an incredible cardigan collection. If you guys didn't know. Maybe. Yeah, you'd be down. Get I no. say no more. Yo, okay. I'm, I've had enough of you. <laughs> <laughs> what makes a good cardigan? You have so many. And um, you, you showed us your cardigan collection on TikTok as well. It was yep. like a whole entire closet worth. So what makes the perfect cardigan? Yeah, patterns. I like it. I do like a pattern. Yeah. One. Some embroidery I've got on there too. I like that. I don't really know what makes a good cardigan. I don't know. Just, <laughs> just if you like it. Yeah, if thing. you like it. How many, how many do you have? Too many. Th 30 like something, have, maybe? I feel like you have more clothes than I have. I mean, sorry, more cardigans than I have clothes. So. <laughs> I have about 30 cardigans. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So From anyone looking, to, anyone looking to buy a, a couple cardigan. of cardigans? <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're moving on to YouTube at Kitty G Cat says, do you ever feel like branching out into a different genre? And if so, which one? Thinking about a rap album. Damn. No, I'm not. Um, <laughs> you heard it here first. Folks. I don't know. Uh, no, I don't think I could do anything else. Yeah. I think I'm... You're good where you are. Yeah, I'm good enough for what, what I do. <laughs> what other genres do you like to listen Ooh. to? I like, like, 70s rock. Like, that would be... If I was to go anywhere, I'd probably be that. But I'd probably, good, I'd probably a scare category. a couple of people away. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if they're ready for it. <laughs> should get on that. Yeah, maybe I will. Yeah. Dance. Yeah, maybe a bit a dance. Of e, bit of EDM. I'm Make there. a house album. Festival. Of just elevator music. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a new genre. Yeah, I'll do it. All right, third question we got uh, from at DessieGirl334 on Twitter. It says, Niall, if an actor were to play you in a movie of your biopic, who would you pick to do so and why? That's an interesting question. Yeah, it is. There's an Irish actor that's in a show called Downton Abbey, and his name is Alan Leach. I don't, I don't think know if I you know, know him. Yeah, if you Google him, you know exactly what I'm saying. And does he look like you? <laughs> he actually does. Can someone confirm? Yeah, um, okay. We bumped into each other because he was on Ellen or something like that. I think it was Corden, actually. And he pulled up, uh, they pulled up a split screen of me and him. 
And I was like, whoa. And then I was- Look, like, I see it now. <laughs> I was in a coffee shop in LA one day and he walked in with his wife and I was just like, I get it. I yes. get it though. <laughs> I really get it. Would you consider having like a movie done and Don't know about if my you? story's that interesting just yet. I think it is. Oh, just yet, more to come. Yeah, I'm planning big this things. This guy's only 30, <laughs> only 30. Things are about to go downhill. Love it. Or, <laughs> <laughs> what goes up must come down. Correct. Watch uh, this. I'm totally kidding, I'm totally kidding. You're only going up now. What are your thoughts on AI music? Because that's been pretty Terrific. in the news these days. Yeah? Has someone ever used, I guess, your voice to do covers of other songs? Not that I've heard of just yet, but I know it's, they're capable of it, and that's weird. Have you heard I of just want, I'd like to keep my job. Okay, does it scare you? Does it feel weird? Or are you like, no, I'm all for this. This is like the new thing. I just don't know where it goes. I know. Could literally not have a job. <laughs> Honestly, you can ask AI to make you an art masterpiece and mm. you do nothing. But I don't know. I'm a bit freaked out by it at the moment. I think you're safe for now, but... Cheers, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what about TikTok? You're pretty active on TikTok. Do you like participating in the trends? Yeah, I try and get involved a little bit. Yeah. I'm getting there. I feel totally. like the TikToks are getting better. <laughs> I call them TikToks. Well, personally, I love participating yeah. in, the tic in the TikTok trend, so I was wondering if you want to do one together. All right. Yeah? What well, one he was doing? like, no resistance. Have you seen the one where people swipe and see what they look like in like 50 years time, just like the old filter. Yeah, yeah. We'll take a selfie and see how we both look. Hopefully yeah. I don't look. You look fabulous, don't worry. Wow, thank you. So do you, ready? Look okay. at that. Okay, amazing. Mm. Guys, before picture. Woo! Hold on, let me also. We're going me first. We're gonna see how I look old. We'll show you guys after. Damn. <laughs> you did well. Really? Oh, well, let's okay, see let's what see happens you. to me. Ready? Oh, God. I already done. look 55. You want that. old or cool old? Now let's do old. We're, we're, not, we're not doing this cool. Wow. Oh, the white wow. hair is insane. Okay, ready, guys? <laughs> wow. I look weathered. Awesome. Thank you so much, wow. Lisa. Shout out to Lisa for the poem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we've had some uh, online questions. We've had some streeter questions. And now we're going to take it to the audience. We have a couple audience Ooh. fan questions. So, Verda, take it away. She's going to hand she it goes. off. There she goes. There she is. There she is. <laughs> Who's got a good question? <laughs> yeah, that's me right now. Those weren't fake fans, by the way. Those were real. I'm you honest. tell them. I have a fan right here. I, she's real. Are you a real fan? <laughs> okay, great. Introduce yourself. My name is Ainsley. Hello. Great name. Ainsley, say hi, Ainsley. Hi, Ainsley. <laughs> and what was your question for Niall? What is the wildest fan interaction you've had? Probably Oof. lots. Right Sorry. Here. <laughs> <I'm Niall. laughs> um, people have asked me to take selfies with them at the urinal. Damn. Yeah. Those people are out there. Damn. Oh God, I've just seen I've seen fans do crazy stuff to like yeah. get close. Yeah. You know, jumping out of dumpsters and... <laughs> That's um, a jump scare. You're fighting it off. Yeah, I've seen a few wild things in South America with full families of people driving with their car doors open. Wow. And, <laughs> yeah, I've seen, Safety just, not first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should actually start writing some of these down. Yeah, you should. Because um, when like... you get put in, it's one of those ones when you get put yeah. in the spot, you can't remember. I've just seen a lot of cra yeah, crazy stuff, like people fainting in front of me. Wow. I've seen that few, like quite a lot, actually. I believe that. It, usually their last words are, are you real? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, their last words. Any yeah. last words? Are you real? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like I say it to them yeah. before they go. Any last words? Any last words? <laughs> That's a terrible answer. I could give you really good ones. I'll see you in about a year's time. We'll go, we'll, awesome. we'll go again. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, that was great. And then I have another fan right here. Hello. Hi, I'm uh, Denise. Hi, Denise. Hi, Denise. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my question is, what is your favorite part of the creative process when you're curating and creating an album? And is there a moment or a memory when you were creating the show that sticks out to you or makes your heart a little bit happy when you think back on? Ooh, mm, that's, that's cute. cute. That was a great yeah, question. Yeah. Very good question. <laughs> no, that was awesome. Uh, that was a really good question. I think when you nail what you want to say. You Sorry, go God. on. <laughs> Do you want to come up here? <laughs> I think when you nail the, the process of knowing what you're going to say, in it, like your, co your concept, I think like, and then you can like narrate a story through that. I think that's a pretty cool moment. When you get a good one, like when you know you've got your single and you're, you're writing it and you're like, oh, well, yes. just don't mess this up, please. We're onto a good one here. And then playing, like playing the music in with the band, like the live band. Or, like when I'm sitting there writing a song, and it's just me and acoustic guitar, or me and you know a friend of mine and a piano, or and we're just writing. And I'm in my head, I'm picturing like what it's going to sound like when it's all done. 
Like, I was like, oh, that'd be a cool drum to use there, or a good synth to use there, or a, guitar, a kind of guitar sound that I'd like there. And you've got a picture in your head, and then you hear live musicians playing it. Yeah. What you're talking about. I think that's the best part of it, like, really coming to life. Well, the night we wrote Heaven was really cool. That was like a... I thought I was going to bed, and then it was like 1 a.m., and the melody that we'd been singing for two days matched up to a musical thing we were working on. And I was like... God, we just, we might have just struck some gold. Yeah, <laughs> struck some gold. Uh, and uh, we're on to something here. I think that's, it's a really good fit. I had it, I haven't had it often. I remember writing, I wrote a song on my last album called Black and White. And I remember like writing that song and just like, we were jumping around like we'd just written Let It Be. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that feeling of, oh, this makes us feel good. I that you can't, that. you can't beat that. I like that. Great that question. question. Yeah, question. Thank you guys, thank you to the audience. Questions, those were amazing. Thank you for the answers, that was also amazing. Yeah, we're gonna pivot a little bit and I wanna talk to you about, obviously you've got friends in the music industry, but one friendship that stands out is obviously your bestie, Louis Capaldi, everyone knows. <laughs> you guys are very close, you guys have got a very, like a goofy and genuine relationship, I think from our perspective. Him. What's <laughs> one word that you would describe, use to describe your friendship with him? Careless. <laughs> That's he a good one. doesn't give a single I feel like he's a ride or die type of friend though. Yeah, no, 100%. He's great. He's for like he's the comedian yeah. and the amazing singer with a great song, yeah. but he's also a really nice fella. Brought up well. Yeah. Good guy. I like that. And um, he also happens to be very funny. I love um, that. He is very funny. But he also doesn't care. When are you guys going to release music together? So, oh, I need to write the thing first. We yeah. wrote we wrote a song before I was like, kind of being nice about it, like saying <laughs> it wasn't that bad. And then I heard him do an interview last week where he went, it was a fucking load of shit. <laughs> and he's got no filter. And now he's just, I'm just going with him on it. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it actually, I can remember it now. I can sing it now. I'm not going to. No, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I didn't think but so. it wasn't, it wasn't horrendous. But listen, we're guys with high standards. Yeah. Um, That's good though. But we need to get into the room. I think a lot of like, if if there wasn't such a schedule conflict thing, you would get a lot more collaborations out of me. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, because I think it's something that people are not doing enough of. One day though. One day. Yeah. But you're right. He was here because we recently actually spoke to Lewis and. And we told him that we were going to be chatting with you, so we asked him to give you a little message, and we're going to play it right now. We got a little <laughs> oh, video I can't message. wait to see this. Hello, Niall. It's Lewis here. The golf clubs that you got me, I took them out. I played my first 18 holes the other day in Boston. Got par on a hole on a par three. This is really interesting for him, trust me. He loves this sort of stuff. I'm pretty pleased about Um I also won the skin, which is golf terminology, apparently. I don't know. But I'm pretty good. Uh, I'm actually pretty bad, but the par f the par on a par three, even though it's a it's a small hole, I was pretty pleased about. It. So thanks for the golf clubs, miss you, brother, love you. Aww. That's the nice thing he's ever said. <laughs> you know what I love? That literally felt like he was. was just I felt so like we're on Facetime. Yeah. Hi, Louis. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, honestly, speaking of, Niall's a really big golfer. For those who didn't know, so we have a little something for you. Okay, so we got some golf, golf balls, balls with your favorite people's faces printed on them. <laughs> Lewis is in there, and it's your One Direction crew. <laughs> That's so hilarious. I have some serious. Questions. You didn't even get like newer photos. <laughs> it's like it's like us on like the second album we cover. Got <laughs> Every time I see the Much Music logo, it reminds me of the first time we ever came here. Yeah. To Toronto. I love that. And that was nuts. That was crazy. That was one of the days now I thought I was going to die. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what about the wildest fan interaction there? My uh, God. It's just here on Queen Street, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I have a serious question, though. Out of those faces, which one are you driving first? <laughs> oh, God. Harold's got a good drive. I take Harry's. I let Harry off the tee. Okay. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I don't know after that. He's the only one that is, he's good at golf. Liam's playing a bit actually, he's good. And then one more thing on that note, we just got a little sum for you for the next time you go golfing. This is a head cover. Sick. It's a driver head cover. That's really Goes cool. Goes over the club. You're learning so much today. Yeah, I know. She got an earpiece in. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Goes uh, over the club. I got some help, my boyfriend likes golf, so really? it helped. Yeah. That's great. Well, um, tell him yeah. thanks. And that's really cool, by the way. I'm He's right there. You can tell him thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, what? He'll help me out with, with really... the terminology and all that. I'm well, actually going to use that, by the way. The time has come. It's your time to shine. I feel like I should get out of the way because it's time for you to do some performances. You're going to perform. I'm too tired. Oh, I know. <laughs> Honestly, I'm pooped too, but... Um, do I have to? <laughs> Does he have to? Yeah! yeah! <laughs> Woo! Okay. Hello! 
joking. Nah. No. Okay. Well, guys, Niall's about to perform for us. Give it up for now one more time. Woo! Let's go. Strange opera falls around you. You float across the room. Your touch is made of something Heaven can hold a candle to You're made of something new Let's not get complicated Let's just enjoy the view It's hard to be a human So much to put an answer to But that's just what we do God only knows where this could go And even if our love starts to grow Out of control And you and me go up in flames Heaven won't be the same I'm having revelations You dance across the floor Beyond infatuation, how I obsessively adore you. That's what I do, and I believe, I believe I could die in your kiss. No, it doesn't get, doesn't get better than this. God only knows where this could go, and even if our love starts to. Out of control And you and me go up in flames Heaven won't be the same God only knows where this could go And even if our love starts to grow Out of control I believe, I believe I could die in your kiss No, it doesn't get, doesn't get Better than, better than this God only knows where this could go And even if our love starts to grow Out of control Starts to grow out of control And you and me go up in flames Heaven won't be the same Talking to yourself in the bathroom Losing your mind in the mirror like you have to Ooh. Screaming in your car in the driveway You're spinning out, think your life's going sideways Ooh. One broken glass turns to two So thin, I 
out of habit Hard to tell the real from the dreams you imagine Nights when one broken glass turns to a total collapse Just know this too shall pass I'm telling you now, telling you now ooh, When it all melts down, I'll be there When it all melts down When it all melts down now Catching up fast Baby, don't you look back Don't you look back When you're hitting the wall And every star falls Don't you worry at all Angelic heaven. Before we go, Niall, we have a little gift from oh. Much to You. This is an illustration done by our very own DJ Shaw Day. Shaw Day, wave to the crowd. Whoa. Very nice. I really like it. It's got all the little um, it's so cute. The names of the songs. Yeah. Me and the Heaven video. And then it's this piece of toilet roll floating around. Yeah. <laughs> like when you're writing the letter yeah. to your fans. She knows the little details. She knows the details. I imagine if it was just like, yeah, toilet roll. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Thank you very much. Well, now thank you. Thank you so much. This has been such a pleasure. Such a wonderful time getting to chat with you about your music, getting to know you, have some fun together. So give it a round of applause thank one more time you. for now. Thank you. So thank you. And thank you also to everyone tuning in, everyone watching. Nice. Thank you for watching. This is Much Music's Intimate and Interactive in partnership with TikTok. Signing off. Much love. Woo!